stream today. If you're catching this on the replay, you might want to hang around because we are talking about how to apply foundation to older skin. My name's Camille and I am 55, soon to be 56. And I know as we get older, it can be a real challenge to try and come up with a flawless foundation. So if you've ever had the problem of caking makeup or settling into, you know, having the makeup settle into your fine lines, or you're just new to makeup and you don't know exactly what to do, or if you're experiencing those dreaded changes that we have during before and after menopause, then this video is definitely for you. So I am going to just say this really quickly and then we're going to get into this. If you have a question, pop it in. I'm going to wait until the end to say um, anything about the, the question so that we can just get through this. And if you gain anything from this video, please give me a thumbs up and I appreciate that. So we're going to start out with clean skin and I'm just going to go through my process. Now normally I would do this in the bathroom where I can just splash water on my face, but for purposes of doing this video, here we go. So I'm using CeraVe. This is the hydrating facial cleanser. I just use a little bit, just a tiny bit, like, you know, about what you'd use for toothpaste probably. And then I normally do this twice just to make sure that I'm getting a nicely cleansed face. And I'm a little bit dry, so I've got a washcloth here with some nice warm water and we're just going to do it like I normally would. If you are looking for a cleanser for your face and you're still using soap, soap is a, a real no-no unless you are an expert soap maker that knows how to make gentle soap for your face. So basically, I don't really recommend it. Soap is really, really harsh, and they take all the good stuff out of it usually when you purchase soap over the counter. So it's a no-no. You want to use a gentle cleansing cream for your skin type. And if you have questions about that, I can help you, but make sure that you add your skin type. So I'm just going to do this once, but normally I would do this twice in the morning and then twice in the evening before bed. Now my skincare is going to be really super simple today because I don't want to get going on the wrong topic today. So we'll talk about skincare in another video, but for today I just want to show you an easy skincare that I do for an everyday foundation. Okay, so now that I'm feeling like that is pretty well rinsed off, you definitely want to be rinsed. I'm going to go straight into applying an eye cream. And this is just a nice eye cream. This one's by Grace and Stella. It's inexpensive. I think it's coming in at right around $12. And I actually got it in an Ipsy bag. Otherwise, I would have never given it a chance. So just a little bit under the eyes. And then sometimes I hit that little wrinkle right there as well. And I'm going to give that just a minute to soak in before I go on. Just a minute to let that soak into the skin. Now with mature skin, we really need to make sure that we've got, we're drenching it with the moisture. The drier the skin, the more layers of moisture you're going to want to put on. Now I'm oily through my T-zone and then really dry under my eyes and on my neck. So under my eyes and under my neck are going to be where I'm going to focus my efforts for creams. Again, you want to have a cream that is designed for your skin type. Now, having said that, today I'm going to use a really, really simple process. Um, this is Revision Skin Care. It's kind of pricey, so, you know, definitely it doesn't have to be this. Again, you want to choose something for your skin type. I like this one because it's got skincare in it and an SPF 50, it looks like. So I'm just going to use a little bit of that. And I'm almost out, out like that. And this is great for the winter time and the summertime when you just want to put SPF on and forget it because there's really no sunshine. 
but just as a protective measure to make sure that your skin stays looking good. So it's one thing to shape your skin up and get it looking good, and then a whole nother to keep it looking good. And of course, you know, most of us are, we're in a process, you know, where we're trying to make it better, trying to keep it as good as what it is, and, you know, keeping what we, what we have. All right, so I'm not going to go onto my eyelids with this, but I do come right to about here. I noticed that even though this cream soaks in nicely to your skin, it also will work just like a lot of other sunscreens, and it'll actually work your, its way down into your eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on my neck as well. And I usually, since I have short hair, will carry it out to my ears. Let's get it on there. Out here. On there. I shouldn't have worn earrings. So now I've got an eye cream on. I've got that layer of skincare on. And since I'm dry here, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this SPF under my eyes as well, just so I have that protection there. And this will depend on how how well your skin allows this to happen. Sometimes you can put a little under there and it won't bother you and other times it will. Usually I'm not worried that this will get under my eyes, but sometimes if you if you put too many layers on, then what'll happen is when you put your makeup on, it'll kind of pill up. So I'm actually just going to test this today and see how it works. No problem if it pills up, you know, that's not the end of the world. I'll show you how to fix that. All right, so now that that's done, I'm trying, I'm, I'm gonna say that I love primers. You don't have to wear a primer. One thing that you'll learn is that your skincare will actually kind of fill in your pores and your fine lines to an extent, right? But if that's not enough for you, if you're having a lot of creasing or you have very large pores like on the nose like I do and right in this area, then absolutely try a primer. If your makeup goes on well without a primer though, skip it, absolutely skip it. This one is a new one for me. It's by Catrice. It's called the, Perfect, the Perfector Poreless Blur Primer. I'm in love with blurring primers. Obviously at my age, anything that blurs is magnificent, so <laughs> I just want to use it from head to toe. All right, so I'm just going to use the tiniest bit, and I'm really only going to put it in a couple of areas that are bothering me, okay, or that will bother me if I absolutely do not get it right. So one of those places is definitely my nose, and even though I try to do all the things right you know pores don't really shrink you can minimize them but they don't really shrink unless you you go to a doctor or someplace where they can actually do something to help so i'm going to make sure that i put this blurring primer it actually does a really nice job of blurring i don't know if you can see that or not but i'm just looking in my mirror off to the side and i can see where that's done a nice job so if you have those lip wrinkles definitely you know any place that it's really bothering you to see. Of course, you can put it on your whole face, but I'm a minimalist. If you don't need it there, don't put it there. But especially around the mouth, like where I've got little fine lines. And I'm going to very cautionary, be very cautionary here, put a little bit on the crow's feet. Mostly where I'm going to want it is going to be right there in that big wrinkle and then right there and on my nose. Tiny bit here. And I have not tested this one to see how it looks under the eyes, so I'm not going to put it there. All right. So the whole point of foundation is to make the skin, just give the skin an even tone. So if you already have a beautiful skin tone, there's no reason to wear any makeup. And there's no reason to use any primer. There's nothing that says you can't go in and just put some lipstick on, a little blush, and do your eyes. Of course, do your eyebrows. You know I'm big on that because that is really going to frame your eyes and make you look so much more refreshed. So if you don't need to even your skin tone out, don't bother with it. 
If you do need to even your skin tone, then I'm going to show you how to do that. And then we're going to talk about tips for removing cakey makeup. The first tip is really just to try and apply it in a way that it's not going to cake up and get too heavy to begin with. So we've prepped the face. Everything's had a chance to soak in. So everything's not wet. We've let it soak in. I'm dewy under my eyes, but everything feels good. Now, if you're still dry under your eyes after layering on that product, do it again. Just do it again. Now, we're going to use a damp beauty blender today. And I'm also going to use a foundation brush, okay? Now, not all foundation brushes are going to work perfectly for applying your foundation, and that's why I'm showing you both ways. Of course, you can use fingers, but if you want a flawless finish or as close to flawless as you can get, you're going to probably want either a really good brush or a really good beauty blender, or even a cheap beauty blender, probably. So <laughs> they're, uh, they're kind of easy to find. I think I got this one at the dollar store, and it's fabulous. So don't, um, don't underestimate the power of $1 at the dollar store. All right, so here we go. We're going to just use this new foundation I found. It's by Catrice. I've worn it a couple of times and it looks really nice. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out right in the center of the face, right there. And then we're going to blend, okay? Now, this is a, a waterproof self-setting formula. It's very, very lightweight and it's very spreadable. So you don't have to work particularly quick, quickly, and I find it's a nice one for beginners and pros alike. So we're gonna start in the big, in the center of the face where we're gonna need most coverage. And it's a very thin formula, so it's definitely not gonna be cakey looking. So I'm just going to brush it on Focusing on the center of my face. And that is, let me take a quick look at my magnifying mirror and see how that looks. And it turns out just beautiful. Now, if you have makeup already and you are wanting to get a flawless finish what i recommend is spraying your brush first just give it a little spray and then when you go in and you're applying your makeup and blending it it'll give it more blending power but it'll also set it in the same step so let's go ahead and add just a little bit more so that's the way i would do it just give it a little spray and then i'll put a little drop right there where i need a little extra and right there Better to start with a little and then work your way up than to put too much on and have to take it off. Okay. And now I have discoloration down here and here, and I'm actually going to want to blend that quite a bit because I don't want to look red on my neck. We can go all we can go all the way down. This is very thin, easy to work with. Just get everything blended. Now at this point, it's looking really, really natural. The only thing that I can see on my end is that I don't have anything under my eyes, so that's kind of making it look funny. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this right under my eyes and just see how this looks. You can use your foundation under your eyes, but I recommend only doing it with a brand that you've worked with before or and, and you know that it works well, or with a really, really thin kind of serum foundation. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that right there. And that was actually a little bit more than a little bit. And I'm going to squeeze this down because I don't know where my little one is. And I'm going to blend it out. And I'm going to give myself a quick look in the magnifying 
here. And I think this is one of those really nice brands. I have not used this uh, before under my eyes, but it looks really, really nice. And I think that I'll be doing this again. What we need to do though, is we need to be spraying that beauty blender with that same setting spray. And if you need a good setting spray, I like the ones by Milani. They're right around $15. And if you've never used one before, just go for one by e.l.f. For all intensive purposes, that will work as well. Just a little tiny bit there. And the reason that I like this over a concealer look is that it's not this big separation between the color of the face and the color under the eyes. We don't have to have a big white under eye. We just need a little bit there to brighten it. And some people don't even need that. Of course, you can use a brush here but my brush is dirty, so I'm using my Beauty Blender. And remember, by spraying that with the setting spray first and then blending it, it's going to help set it at the same time, so we're not using any powder to set it. If you're an old-fashioned powder setter, there's nothing wrong with that if that works for you. But as we get older, it seems like it's a lot harder to use a powder because it just dries us up. Just dries everything out, and then... You can see where I've actually removed a little bit of makeup right there. So I need a tiny bit more coverage there. Tiny bit more. Then we'll just blend it. Make sure I have enough coverage on my nose because that's where I'm going to want the most coverage. And if there's any place where I need a little bit more I'm just going to take a tiny dot, just a tiny dot. And that is a really natural look. Now, if I wasn't going to wear any other makeup, I would just go ahead and take whatever's left over there and just tap it above my eyes. Just tap it above your eyes. You've already got that setting spray on your, your beauty blender, so there's no point in adding more. But if you just want to have like a natural looking, no makeup look, there you go. Natural, no makeup look that evens out your skin tone. So now if you have a question, go ahead and pop it in. But what we covered really quickly in this was uh, cleansing the skin, prepping it, primer, whether you need it or not. If you have fine lines, Okay, so Stellar says, I think I do like brushes. We'll be spraying the brush and applicator with set a setting spray. I do community theater and powder on me and stage lighting doesn't, yeah, it doesn't look good. Right, it's just so thick. Yeah. Okay, and then I want to show you one more thing. And if you have a question, pop it in. But I did want to go over tips for if you get too much on there. So if you get too much makeup on, what I like to do is just very, very simple. I always have Q-tips nearby, and I always have some kind of primer nearby. So I like to just take my primer and a Q-tip. And then if I have places where my makeup is settling, it's usually gonna be like right here. I just kind of go over those areas. You see where I've gone over it and it's removed the makeup, right? But in, in its place, it left a little bit of that blurring primer. So if you'll just go through and remove it or blend it out, it's kind of like you're blending it and you're removing it at the same time. Just remove it from places that want to crease up. Even if it's under your eyes, you can do it there. Absolutely, I do that all the time. Or if it's out here, anywhere you're creasing up, go ahead and just remove it. Because chances are you really don't need makeup wherever that spot is anyway. So just by removing it, it won't crease up and you'll still have the coverage everywhere else. So I hope that makes sense. So if you've enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up on there. And thank you for subscribing if you're subscribed. And let me just check out a couple of these questions. Thanks, Miss Gloria. I appreciate you. Yes, powders under the eyes, difficult. 
And if you're watching this on replay, definitely pop a question in there or leave a comment. So, um, let's see. Stellar says, I have rosacea, oily tea, blackheads, dry with fine lines, acne scarring on the positive side, not pale and have glow. So, I can leave you some recommendations when we're done with the live. That's no problem. And so glad to see you all. I certainly appreciate you. And um, thanks so much for watching. I know this is a short live, and I'm going to do a whole series where we cover all of the basics and then some. And so I'd love to hear your ideas for other lives. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.